שלום everybody and welcome to רגע בעברית שורשים אדישן. We are working through the book of Shemot. I hope you have been blessed as we are being blessed of going through the writing of Rabbi Moshe Al-Sheikh as we understand more behind the beauty of the message that God is giving Moshe through this book of Shemot. Last week we were in Parashat Truma and we talked about this exaltation, this opportunity that God is giving each and every one of us opportunity to have a piece of heaven. right here on earth. From chapter 25, all the way to the end of the book of Exodus, we're dealing with one topic, the preparation of the house of God, the preparation of the world for the coming of the Mashiach. You see, this preparation of the Mishkan, our sages explained to us, is an allegory for the preparation of the world before the high priest, the Kohen Gadol, Aaron is called Kohen Mashiach, as we're going to see in the book of Leviticus later on, for truly partnering with God in preparing the world. And this week in Parashat Tetzaveh, I want us to deal for a moment and dive a little bit deeper for the word of the Al-Sheikh. In chapter 27-20, we read, V'ata Tetzaveh et Bnei Yisrael, ויקחו לך שמן זית זך כתית למאור לעלות נר תמיד. Which read, And you shall command the children of Israel, בני ישראל, that they should bring you pure olive oil, hand crush in a mortar for the illumination to kindle a lamp continually, also known as נר תמיד. The idea of Ner Tamid is, is a light that was illuminating the entire area 24-7. Even today you see when an ark being put, there is always a, a light bulb that is illuminating right above it. Now we have to pay attention to the language of the Torah. The Al-Sheikh asked the important question. Why does the parasha begin with the word ve'ata tetzaveh? And you, you should command. It should just simply say tzav, give the command. Why is this word repeated? And what is the nature of the command that God is giving to Moshe? You see, there is a repetition here in the text. I want us to understand the mitzvah that is giving for the Ner Tamid. It also seems a bit strange. Why would God give such a mitzvah, such a strange commandment to uh, Moshe around the light? After all, does God really need light? Listen to what the Al-Sheikh is saying. He says, In order to understand this passage, we have to look at Midrash Tanchuma on Parashat Tetzaveh. He said, the Midrash asked, why were we commanded to light a menorah? And they answer, God was telling us, illuminate before me in the world, so that I can illuminate before you in the world to come. This is a very interesting concept. God is saying here that the action that we are doing here are in a way going to be deposited to the world to come. It sounds a lot like what Yeshua is teaching when he said, store up your treasure in heaven. You see the idea here that, that we can illuminate the world today for the sake that God will illuminate our future tomorrow is important. However, this does not seem to enter, answer the sage's dilemma, which is why should we light a menorah before Hashem, who illuminate the entire world with his glory and certainly does not need any light. Does God need light? Of course he doesn't. The difficulty is compounded, the Al-Sheikh explained, when we consider that Hashem promised to reward us greatly in the world to come, 
and making a light for him in the world, although the light is of no real use for Hashem. May his name be blessed. In order to clarify the matter, the al Sheikh explained, we must look at Exodus Rabbah. And he says, you desire the action of your creations. The sages said that even though Hashem is the guardian of Israel, he commanded the Leviim to guard the Mishkan. Clearly, the sages were bothered by the question. Why Hashem issued such a command when he doesn't even need those things? Their answers, they, they, their answer that Hashem sometimes desires us to do things that he does himself require explanation. If we are commanded to raise light below, it means that God is lighting something from above. And this is important to understand. We are called in the Brit Achadasha to be imitators of God. And this is exactly what the rabbis are alluded to. That we are to imitating, imitate God who does certain things in the heavenly here on earth even if we don't understand them. You see, we can explain as follows, the rabbi says. Truly, God has no need for your performance of mitzvot. Unlike a flesh and blood king who needs what servants produce, Hashem does not gain anything from our righteous behavior. Hashem desires to bring His creation closer to Him in order to sanctify them and to bed them with his divine light in the world to come. This closeness to Hashem is what the ultimate goodness. As it, it says, my soul declares Hashem is my portion. In the book of Lamentation, chapter 3. Nevertheless, God wants us to merit this light through our own actions. Listen to this. So he gave us the 613 mitzvot. These mitzvot are derived from and parallel in the physical level the 613 light that emanate from Hashem and which is attached to Him. Each mitzvah represents a light. In the book of Proverbs it tells us that the mitzvot are a light. Okay? But you have to understand that each mitzvah that represents an earthly light ultimately connected to an heavenly light. Now we start to understand why God wants him to raise a nail to mid. He wants to have a heavenly connection with each and every one of us on an ongoing basis. Nail Tamid, eternal life. He does not want this connection to stop. And this is important for us to understand. For every good spiritual thing Hashem wants to give us, He connects us with light. He commands us to do a mitzvah that is similar to a spiritual mitzvah that is represented in the heavens. You see, we see an example of this. He explained, the al Sheikh to the Leviim, as represent the entire Jewish people, to guard the Mishkan in order to merit a higher light, which is divine protection from a anything that might make us sin more than anything else. God wants you to guard the light. In Pirkei Avot, it teaches us that we are to make offenses to the Torah. Why? Because the connection between us and Hashem, between the heaven and the earth, is the most important thing to God. What is the most significant thing to Hashem? You guessed it. It's your relationship with Him. Your covenant in this relationship. The light that you light from below. So as you go forward this week, try to take this mitzvah to heart. All of us, 
all of us are commanded to light a heavenly light. And how do we do it? We have an intention, or in Hebrew, kavana, beyond what we're doing here on earth. We're not to fulfill a mitzvah just in an empty way, but always remember that when you turn a light switch on here on earth, you are turning on a light switch in the heavens. And when you turn it off in earth, you turn it off on the heaven. Let's turn up all the lights by fulfilling the mitzvot and seeking the heavens. This, friends, is this week Rega Beivrit. <laughs>